All right, so I was um, on my Discord and someone posted this image and it kind of sparked some curiosity because my security chops aren't like the best. But I wanted to see if I could try to solve this little question. It says, can you spot the vulnerability? I was looking through here and I was trying to think about different ways. It's like, okay, the main ways for vulnerabilities would be like cross-site scripting or cross-site re request forgery, right? And I was looking through here and I was trying to figure out like, hey, well, what, what could be some potential security vulnerabilities? Um, the first one you should always look for is like cross-site scripting. So if you look here, there is the ability for people, th there's some like templating that's being displayed to the page, right? This is a potential vulnerability because it depends on how this card is set. If this is something that people can type into input boxes and you're not validating, then that means that they can store whatever type of HTML they want in your database. And then when they try to view their own credit card information, um, you could put scripts in here, you could do some other stuff. Okay, so I did look through here. There's a post credit card endpoint that takes in a request body.card. Okay, so basically once you log into this little backend application, you can change your credit card, right? But they don't do any validation on rec.body.card. They don't verify it's like a real credit card. They just allow you to put whatever text that you want. And then later on, there's an endpoint for rendering out the exact same um, string. So right there, like that's a big vulnerability. But if you look at it, the only person who can view that like the only person who could view that like string that has some you know injected scripts into it would be the person whose account created and changed the credit card so it's like is this really that much of a vulnerability for other people um and then i started like reading through the responses and someone gave this response which it took me a while to figure out like what the heck he's actually talking to talking about so what i actually did is i went ahead and replicated that i want to explain that to you all as to like, what is the real vulnerability? Okay, so we have an API endpoint here and it has the very same endpoints as a login endpoint where you can log in that sets a cookie on your browser. We have a change credit card endpoint where you can do a post request and you can modify your credit card information. And then you have the ability to basically view your own credit card. I did change a little bit and add some styles here. So the code that we're looking at is not exactly the same as the Twitter post, but it's basically the same idea. But up here, I want to show you a little bit. Um, instead of actually hitting this endpoint at all, like I decided to like, we don't care about this endpoint really, because the idea of that endpoint is that as an attacker, you can create an account and then you can inject whatever credit card that you want. So in my case, I added a script here that basically looks for an iframe um, and then it grabs the form and adds an event listener to the form when it submits. And when a user submits a form in the iframe that we're looking for, it's going to go ahead and search through that iframe and get the text and then it takes the card information that it found in the iframe and it sends it off to a backend. Okay, so this is what the attacker would add in. They'd add in some type of script that looks for something on the page or looks for something in the JavaScript and then they're going to send that off through their own little database or endpoint so they can keep track of all the information. Okay, and then we have like the victim over here. Their password is just 1234 and this is the card information that we're trying to uh, steal in a sense. So they get this going. I have an index which is hosted on port 8080 and that's hosting our credit card site, right? This is hosting like our online store is what I'm calling it. And it looks like this, right? Some online store that stores your credit card. And as the victim, if you log in, it basically does a request to your login endpoint and then it redirects you to 8080 credit card. And you can see this here, okay? So you might not, it might not be apparent still, like how is this an issue? How can someone potentially steal this information. So over here on the left, I have another site that's hosted on port 5000. It's called Fake Online Store in iFrame. This whole thing, although it looks identical to the other site, this is actually an iFrame, which is pointing to that same URL. So one thing that you won't notice is that I actually have another iFrame on this page that is hidden, right? This is display and none. You can't see it. The normal user would not see this iFrame, but this is loading up a page called port 5000 attack. Okay, so let's look at form 5000 attack. What does this do? It basically has a form that when this page loads, it's going to log in with that attacker information. Okay, so the, the hidden iframe under the hood is going to log in with the attacker information. And then that, because of how the, the express backend works, that redirects you to your credit card page. Remember, if you go over here, it says login, and that's going to take you and redirect you to your credit card page. But since this attacker has stored some scripts in the card information, when that iframe redirects, it's going to load those scripts 
And those scripts basically look up at the entire DOM element. They find the first iframe, which is this one. And then it's going to dive into the code and try to find the card information. So let me show you what happens when I actually log in as the victim. Remember, there's another iframe on this page that's listening for me to submit this form. And the moment I do, I go and I look and see the credit card information on the page, and then I submit that somewhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and click login. And notice that it looks exactly the same other than some like little styling down here. But if you look here, there's a fetch request, an XHR request to my own endpoint, right? This port 5000 is not the original online store. This is some other endpoint that an attacker would have. And that's storing your credit card information. Notice that the card information is right here in the URL. Okay, so if I do the same thing on the real online store, notice that it will not make a request. This is the original site, and after you log in, it doesn't make any type of request. It doesn't send off that credit card information anywhere. This, the bad site, which someone could potentially send you in an email, they could send you in like a Slack notification, they could send you in a Discord link. When you click it, because of the way the backend code is set up and it's not actually validating the inputs and people can inject whatever they want, you have the ability to have two iframes on the page that are sharing information because they both point to the same origin, which is localhost 8080. You look here, this iframe for the victim is localhost 8080. And the iframe for the attacker, after you log in, redirects you to localhost 8080, right? So both iframes are kind of pointed to this, the real website. But because of the cross-site scripting vulnerability that the, the card information has, this iframe is able to talk to this iframe and kind of steal whatever information. And then I can send that information off to a backend. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I wanted to make a video to kind of share a little bit about that. Because I did stare at this for a while. And I'm like, I don't really know what... What is the vulnerability here? I mean, it's not using like secure cookies, it's not using HTTP only cookies. The users are sorting some objects. So it's like, it took me a while to figure it out. And I never did figure it out um, because again, my security chops are not the best. And reading through this even took me quite a while to understand like what the heck this guy was even trying to talk about. But for anyone who's watching this video, I think the main takeaway is this is why you always need to sanitize the inputs that come across the wire, right? If you're allowing someone to change their credit card like this, and you're just saying, okay, take exactly what is sent over the wire and store that in the database, that's when you're gonna open up um, a potential world of hurt, right? That's just one part of the puzzle. You have to also interpolate it as raw, like HTML as well, to really cause some issues. So you can either sanitize when it comes in from the input, and you can also like, sanitize it before you render it out to a template. Now, if you're using something like React, this would never be an issue, right? Because the only way to take raw HTML and put it in your React page is if you use like the dangerously set HTML, which I would never recommend doing to begin with. So I think this is more of a vulnerability that you probably see more for like server-side templating languages. Um, but it's good to keep in mind because these type of attacks are the things that us web developers need to be aware of. And make sure that like we're not opening up our site to these vulnerabilities because the moment you can allow people to like inject scripts and have those be displayed in your page people can start stealing whatever information that they want and they can start doing bad actions on behalf of the user right just the fact that there's two i iframes on this page you wouldn't think that that would be an issue but it really is an issue because now you have these iframes that can do whatever you want with the data um from the other person so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little talk and overview. Again, I'm not like a security expert, but it, but it did spark my curiosity. I was like, what is the actual vulnerability? How can I figure it out and explain it to you all? Um, if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. Also, I got a Discord. You're welcome to join if you want to talk to me directly or find a place to hang out with some other developers. And I also have a newsletter that I recommend that you subscribe to because I am making a course where I show how to build a full stack SaaS app with Stripe, uh, the T3 stack, Prisma, um, a SQL database. So if you're interested in like learning specifically from me and the T3 stack, uh, be sure to click my uh, subscribe to my newsletter and look for that notification in the future. I'm still working on the course, but hopefully it should be done pretty soon. Have a good day and happy coding.